The Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD, is a large hydroelectric dam currently being built along the Blue Nile as a tributary river, along with the White Nile and white portions of the Grand River Nile. Construction of the dam can be found right on the edge of the border between Ethiopia and Sudan. According to an annual report by BP, if the GERD were its own country, it would become the fourth largest energy producer in Africa behind only South Africa, Egypt and Algeria. And with dams also comes water and a newfound stream of water for the oft drought stricken Ethiopian highlands as the existence of the GERD will help create a reservoir volume of approximately 74 cubic kilometers. This also ties in with Ethiopia's 2015 to 2020 growth strategy, which is focused on improving energy and drinking water infrastructure. And with so much energy supplies on hand, the GERD will also offer the region with the stable source of power it needs to industrialize and take itself to the next level. And this message has not fallen on deaf ears, as Ethiopia has already signed a power sourcing agreement with Sudan and is in talks to sell electricity to Kenya and Tanzania. The GERD marks as a major step in Ethiopia's quest to become a middle income nation by 2025 and it will do this by kickstarting and supporting the construction and manufacturing sectors by ensuring a constant and secure power supply while regular potable water sourced from the dam will help raise agricultural standards and help construction to thrive as crucial inputs such as concrete will now have the type of water necessary for consistent production with the help of the GERD, Ethiopia will become a bastion of stability for itself and its neighbours as it plans to put the days of drought, food scarcity and energy instability permanently behind it. But in all its hopes and glories, the project is not without its controversy and detractors as it has left Ethiopia and Egyptian relations on the rocks as the two quarrel over the operation of the dam and its potential impact on Egyptian water supplies. So with that said, if you want to understand the relationship between the Nile countries, specifically the trio of Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia, we must step back into the past. The first ever Nile River Treaty was established in 1891 between Britain and Italian forces, where they agreed that no form of blockage, like a dam, ver, or a bridge, would be built over the Nile. But as Britain would go on to lose power over Egypt and Sudan, and Ethiopia would fight off its Italian occupiers, you would imagine that the regional arrangements of the Nile changed. And that they did. Starting in 1969, now independent nations Egypt and Sudan negotiated to utilize the waters of the Nile in preparation for the completion of the Aswan Dam with the agreement guaranteeing a certain rate of water flow and supply. Back to this later. Then, more recently in 1999, the Nile Basin Initiative was launched with all nine river sharing countries, with the organization's main purpose being to develop the river in a cooperative manner, share substantial socio-economic benefits, and promote regional peace and security. As you can see, a lot of things have changed throughout the region since that old colonial agreement was made in 1891. One of those things is the Aswan Dam. Do you remember that? Yes, before Ethiopia's GERD, there was Egypt's Aswan Dam. Located close to the Ethiopian-Sudanese border, the dam is quite the impressive feat of engineering. At 111 meters high, its construction created the massive 132 cubic kilometer capacity Lake Nasser. And when Egypt built this dam between 1960 and 1970, it did so with the overarching aims of creating an industrial, more water secure and advanced nation. Goals not dissimilar to those of Ethiopia's right now. In fact, the dam helped protect Egypt from the great drought of 1972 to 1973 and 1983 to 1987, ones that affected much of West and East Africa, Ethiopia in particular. Which does beg the question, if Egypt did it, then why can't Ethiopia do the same? Fast forward 50 years and Ethiopia is now following in Egypt's footsteps and its model of success. Once again, control over the flow of water into the Nile is a contentious issue. But ongoing talks allow us to see that the spirit of 1999 is still present and that both neighbouring nations share a common heritage 
rooted in water scarcity and pre-industrialization. And whether you'd like to believe it or not, climate change has only heightened growing fears about water scarcity across the continent. With cities like Cape Town experiencing near water collapse in recent years and providing Ethiopia with all the more reason to future-proof its own nation, all the while providing stability to the region. Now, we'd be remiss not to acknowledge the fact that many people will be displaced as a result of the GERD being built. In fact, this reality has already sunk in for some of the local populations. But the Ethiopian public and many of us outsiders try to take solace in the promises of development and a better life for all once the dust finally settles on the construction of this dam. Because come the completion of the GERD mega project between sometime this year and 2022, Ethiopia will gift itself with the type of stable electrical grid needed to spearhead the development of its nation and those of the East African region, as Ethiopia will be able to cut off any of its excess supply to the East African bloc, helping to power industry and construction here as well. The boost in secure water supplies could also bring food security across the region and reduce poverty and malnutrition rates. Through the GERD, one nation's hand literally washes the other as they all work to raise the profile of Africa as the next big thing. Since we last filmed this video, a few things have happened when it comes to the GERD. And it seems like uh, Ethiopia is tired of waiting and they've decided to just go rogue and start filling the dam. Um, it's definitely an interesting scenario. Hopefully not too many sparks fly as a result of it, but where do you stand on this issue? How do you think Ethiopia is dealing with it? Are they doing it the right way? Um, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. But yeah, it's uh, going to be an interesting space moving forward. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more, please be sure to like and subscribe to us. Thank you to everyone who's already subscribed already. It's really appreciated and we will keep those videos coming. Stay blessed and get woke.